today we are going to talk about how to get into the arm balance ashtapakrasan, the eight angle pose. Now this is a really fun looking shape <laughs> uh, and before the handstand became super popular, uh, the ashtapakrasan was actually the, you know, the, the pose that every yoga teacher would want to do or want to uh, show in their bio because it's just extremely impressive. So yeah, now it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of lost its spotlight and I feel so sorry for it. Um, um, so I'm just gonna, you know, quickly do, do a tutorial on how to get into it. Um, actually, strength-wise is very similar to crow. Um, but then a lot of people tend to get lost in Ashtapakras and they, they are so confused, like why are the legs slipping? and they just cannot lift and all that. So uh, we are gonna go through some preparation poses. Hopefully um, that will help you to open up the parts of the body that needs to open. And then we are going to get into Asha Prakasa. Now I will be only demonstrating on one side just to save time. So uh, when you're doing it, when you're practicing this on your own, it will be great to do both sides just to balance things out. Okay, and I'll be doing the right side simply because it, the sunlight is coming from here and it looks better. <laughs> That's all. Okay. All right. So we are going to need a block today. Um, if you don't have a block, grab a few blocks. It's something that you are going to sit on. Okay. So for Ashtapakrasan, it's an arm balance with the legs kind of intertwined and then kind of pressed out to the sides and you're just kind of chilling out. Um, there's like a long story behind it, but I won't go into details. However, I think I'll add a, um, a, a link at the bottom just for those of us who are interested um, to find out the story behind this uh, shape. It's actually it's a very interesting and wonderful story. Okay, so uh, we are going to work on the hips. A lot of people, they struggle with the hips because they are like, okay, I'm here, but then the legs tend to slide down like all the time and it gets frustrating. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the reasons why is because when we're in this shape, we don't really know how to hug the leg into the body. So we are gonna do exactly that. So we are gonna do Eagle Pose Bhagavadasa. So let's stand up. I don't really care what you do with the art. Okay, so I'm gonna do the right side, not doing mirror image. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm not doing mirror image. So here we go, right leg. Um, you don't have to be able to hook the toes around the back of the ankles. Um, you do, however, want to bend the standing leg quite a little bit so that you can wrap the right, the top leg more. And then you want to feel the shin bone able to hug into one another. So the top shin bone is pressing towards the right side, and then the left shin bone is pressing towards the opposite side, like that. Okay, and just breathe, letting the body kind of get used to this hugging effect, this sensation. Of course, if you can hold the toes around the back of the ankles, why not? This is actually um, an even better way because we actually hook in the end. So you actually do want to, you know, in the prep pose to be as uh, similar to the final shape. Don't forget to breathe. Five, four, three, so you can go lower. Two, one, and then release it, just shake it out. Now we are going to work on another shape, Pasha Kanasana, the extended side angle. So uh, working on this twist, this side bending element, extremely important again. So right foot in front, left leg behind, and then the hand goes inside. Top hand, I don't really care what you do. So you actually want to have the thigh and the side body coming quite close together and try not to have the hips facing the floor, you actually want to open the hips a little bit and just stay. Again, whatever you do to the neck, unimportant. Really charge up the legs, engaging your glutes, feeling the heels dragging into the midline. Okay. The right arm is pushing the floor away. I'm breathing. Again, feeling the hip crease, the hip flexor is a hip crease. Okay, stay three, stay two, stay one, okay? And then you are gonna release it and then sit down on the floor, okay? 
Do whatever that you need to to reset. And now we are going to work on lizard. So for lizard, there are a lot of different variations, but um, for this particular uh, setup, you do want to be quite specific. So uh, having the right foot in front, okay. So you actually want to have the toes and your knee facing 12 o'clock, and the knee is able to hug in to the shoulder. So whether you are on your hands or uh, whether your forearms are on a block or maybe the forearms directly down to the floor, that is less important than this. So this is number one, wherever the arms are, is secondary. So you want to be able to feel that right big toe pressing down and the leg again knows how to hug in to the body on its own. Breathing. So again, it's not about how close the chest is towards the floor, away from the floor, it's more about the leg. Because when I teach this, a lot of people forget this part, they just kind of collapse down. Okay, hold it. Stay five, four, three, two, one. And then we are going to release it. Take a few moments to reset. So one last movement before we attempt a Shepakrasan. So we just want to, again, open up the hip a little bit more. And at the same time, we want to feel the side body, the obliques working a little bit. So we want to come into a tabletop. And then you are going to stand the right leg out behind you. Now from here, you are going to bend the knee. Okay? And then you are going to wing the knee out to the side and draw a big circle with your knee. Imagine you're a little dog peeing. And then on the exhale, just bring that circle, bring that knee right into the armpit. Okay. You want to stretch the leg out on the inhale. And then on the exhale, bend the knee, big circle, and draw it as close to the armpit as you can. But all this time, using the side body muscle to hug everything into the body. Okay. Let's do a few of these. And when you're doing this movement, be mindful that the shoulders don't move. Can you not bring the shoulder to the knee? You're bringing the knee into the shoulder. Okay, very, very different. And then for the last one, just hold here. Breathing, three, two, and one. Okay, and then release it. And I actually lied. We actually have two more to do. <laughs> What's well, very, very simple. So next one is the pigeon, of course, right? For this one, of course, um, the more open the hip, the easier you are uh, to get into the shape. I'm sorry, but that's just some of the um, requirements for some of these shapes. Okay, but then don't stress things out. Okay, just come down. Prop if you need to, and just make sure that you can kind of feel the pelvis relatively level, so you don't want to lean all the way to the right side. Stay five, four, three, two, one. And then you are going to come out of it. Final one is a hip hug. So we are gonna sit with the legs crossed, and then we are going to lift the right leg up and the calf will be resting on the inside of the elbows. So if, when we're doing this, if you are here, okay, or here, down, here, then just spend a few more times to open up the hips, okay? Sway the body side to side. And then feel free to continue or maybe wrap the leg in like so. So the sole of the foot will be resting on the inside of the left elbow and the knee will be resting on the inside of the right elbow. Now from here, we are gonna do a hip movement. So please pay attention to where the knee is going. So the right hand is gonna grab onto the outer edge of the right foot and the sole of the foot will be facing the front. As the sole of the foot faces the front, the knee is gonna point to the back. Extremely important. Don't wing the knee out to the side, it's not gonna work. 
Now you want to keep the thigh, the inner thigh and the right side body quite close together. Gently pulse. Okay. So the knee is pointing to the back. Okay. You don't want to open it like so. And show me more. And I'll tell you why later. Okay. And just stay. Breathe. Sit tall. Again, if any of these movements feels uncomfortable, back off. Do more of the previous warm-ups. Okay. All right, and then release. And that is it for warm up. We are going to do the Ashtaprasan. So again, um, the warm up was really quick um, because I just want to speed things up. Um, if you need more time, uh, go right into it. Okay. Uh, I know that a lot of people tend to rush through warm up. Let me tell you, nah, that's not a good way to do it. I used to rush through warm up as well, but then I actually found out that it's actually a waste of time. <laughs> so spend more time really warm up properly and then when you work on the peak pose whatever it may be it's going to be a lot easier for you right okay so for Ashra Prakasin we are going to use a block it's just to make our lives a little bit easier we're going to sit on it so the reason why is because the hips need to lift uh, when we enter the shape. So if you're sitting on the block already, then chances are your hips are already raised up. But then sometimes when you're sitting on such a tiny block with all these leg movements, sometimes it gets a little bit confusing or complicated. So maybe grab two blocks or something, a bigger surface area so you can kind of wiggle around without having to worry about the balance. Okay, so I'm just, just too lazy, so I'm just going to sit on the block. Okay, so now what you want to do is just kind of relax the left leg down to the block, to the floor. And then you are going to work on the right leg. So remember that movement with the knee facing behind you. This is what we're doing right now. Okay, now um, there is a requirement for this leg. It has to go above the elbow. Of course, again, the higher it is, the better because you're tighter together, you're more compact it's easier for you to lift. But then um, as long as it's higher than the elbow, then you're good to go. Because anywhere below the elbow, you cannot lift up because we have to bend the elbows, right? Okay. So for me, I have my left hand to grab onto the foot and then I bring the knee to point to the back like so. Now the right arm is going to go inside of that leg and it's gonna go down. Making sure that the leg is higher than the elbow and the leg knows how to hug itself in. Think of um, the lizard leg and also think of the eagle leg, okay? And then from here, you are just going to round the back a little bit as you look forward. Again, this is extremely important. Look forward, don't look down at the floor. Now from here, place both hands down to the floor, shoulder width apart, and just tangle the ankles together. I know some people, some teachers are very, um, strict about which ankle goes on top for me it just doesn't matter whatever feels more comfortable to you now the hands they need to place in front of the hips quite a bit of a distance not close to the hips okay so remember further away look forward squeeze your legs in bend the elbows look forward and bring the chest with the eyes as well and you want to press the legs up squeeze the legs to the side Keep looking forward and then send the butt towards the back of the room. And here you go, Asha for Okay. And that's it. I'm gonna do it again without a block. For me, I actually think without a block is easier. Okay, so um, here it is again. So um, a lot of people tend to lose it. Some people lose it around the, uh, with the leg wrap. Some people lose it with the coordination. So making sure that uh, once the legs are in place, making sure they hug in closely together. So here it is again, leg wraps around the uh, right upper arm, ankles intertwined together. So before we do that, make sure the leg knows how to hug in on its own. So the heel wants to come in to the body, okay? And then it's out to the back. Ankles hug, hands down, quite far away, as you can see. For me, it's about a uh, hand distance, okay, from thumb to pinky fingers. Look forward, squeeze the legs in, suck the belly in, you look forward, and then at the same time, as the chest lean forward, 
the legs are going to press. Okay, remember the word is press, not extend, has to have a bit of effort. Press, and then the hips are going to send towards the back of the room. Hug, 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 hug. Don't stop hugging the legs in, okay? And then that's it. Okay. So the chest forward, legs squeeze out to the side, and the butt back happens at the same time. Okay, so actually, when the chest is leaning forward enough and the legs are pressed and stretched out to the side enough, the hips would automatically lift up. Okay, but then when the hips start to lift, don't get so excited or don't get too nervous that you look down at the floor. You need to keep on looking forward. So when the eyes are looking forward, the chest will follow and then because of the upper body weight is leaning far more forward, so the hips got no place to go except to go up, and that's it, okay? So give it a go, I know it's quite a long tutorial. Um, yeah, but kind of works. Anyways, so yeah, um, maybe a block is better for you, maybe no blocks are better for you, okay? And don't forget to do the other side, all right? Hope it's helpful to you and please like, share and comment my videos and I'll see you again soon. Take care.